Good day everyone and welcome to our class 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world. We are now in quarter two, week one of our lessons. I am your subject teacher, Mrs. Claudia J. Abinoha. Please have with you your notebooks and pens for taking down notes. From our learning competency, identify representative texts and authors from Asia, North America, Europe, Latin America, and Africa spring forth the following objectives which you must achieve for this week. 1. Recognize some representative texts and authors around the world and their contributions. 2. Explain the literary elements, genre, form, and theme of a literary text, and present a short analysis of a literary text using 5-5 method. Before we move on, let's try to answer task 1. What's the word? That's the word on page 2, module 1. We have our hints for missing words across and those down. So, what's the word? For across, let's have one. It refers to all works of literature in English published in the United States which has produced many great writers through the centuries. What's your answer? Correct! American literature. For number three across, these were essentially modernist novels which appeared in the second half of the 20th century. Anyone? Correct. Boom novels. And across number five, he is known for the Iliad and the Odyssey. That is very easy. Very good. That is Homer. Now let's go for the words down. Your clue for number two is an Indian epic written in Sanskrit and is considered to be the longest poem in history with about 100,000 couplets. Do you know the answer? Correct. Mahabharata. That's it. For number four, down. An art form that combines unrelated images or events in a very strange and dreamlike way. That is, correct, surrealism. You see? Here is the correct answer for each of the puzzle. What are your thoughts and ideas about the words that you have found in the crossword puzzle? Did the words sound familiar to you? How are these related to literature? These words are connected with world literature, for these involve some great writers and their literary works. Like these artworks, they are suggestive who of who their creators are and where they are hailed from. This one was created by Shannon Wright. Now let us take a clo closer look at some of the world famed writers and their equally famous contributions to the world of literature. As your task number two, Create a similar table or grid from page 3 of module 1. Fill out the grid with the necessary data as you can see by the example. Okay? As shown by the table in task 2, we are now into literature among continents of the world. Different writers from these continents offer varied and rich human nature experiences which lead us to discern larger truths and ideas in a society where we belong. Now let's have a glimpse at each of the continent's literature and what particular countries are among them. But first, let's talk about the different literatures embodied in this lesson today. First, we have English literature. This encompasses both written and speech works by writers from the United Kingdom. 
American literature, it refers to all works of literature in English published in the United States. The European literature are the Indo-European languages including Latin, Greek, the Romance language, and Russian that comprises European literature. All works of literature in Latin American countries like Chile, Argentina, Mexico, Cuba, Guatemala, Colombia, and Peru belongs to the Latin American literature. In Asian literature, it refers to the body of literature produced in the countries in Asia, which includes Chinese, Japanese, Indian literatures, and of course, Philippine literature. Anyway, we have discussed already the Philippine literature in the first grading. And the last one that we will be talking about is the African literature, which refers to the body of literary works not only produced in Afro-Asiatic and African languages, but also to those works by Africans using English, French, and other European languages. The next questions from this information would be, who are some of the important writers in the English literature? Why are they important? What literary forms are prominent in the English literature? English literature is divided into six periods. Let's begin with the first, the Old English literature, from 600 to 1100 or 1100. This earliest form of English literature was spoken by the Anglo-Saxon, a Germanic tribe living in Britain in the 5th century. One significant work written in the Old English is Beowulf, which is known for its use of kennings. Beowulf is the longest epic poem in this period. But what is a kenning? Kenning is a figure of speech in which two words are combined in order to form a poetic expression that refers to a person, a place, or a thing. Examples of kennings in Beowulf are Whale Road, which means the sea, Light of Battle, which means a sword, Battle Sweat, which means blood. Raven harvest means corpse. Ring giver means king. And sky candle means the sun. Next period, 1 or 1100 to 1500 is the Middle English literature where it is a blend of Old English and Norman French. Norman French is a dialect spoken by Normans of Normandy. Geoffrey Saucer, the father of English literature, wrote the Canterbury Tales, the most famous piece in this era. So if Old English has Beowulf, Middle English has the Canterbury Tales. Next is the Elizabethan period or Elizabethan literature. It is the golden age of English literature and drama. William Shakespeare, also known as the Bard of Avon, wrote his plays and sonnets during this period. Among his creations are Hamlet, King Lear, Macbeth, Othello, The Merchant of Venice, and his 154 sonnets. Next is the Romantic period literature from 1800s to 1837. This is the golden age of lyric poetry. It became the expression of the poet's personal feelings and emotions. Some of the works are Songs of Innocence and of Experience from William Blake. Lyrical Ballads from William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge, The Eve of St. Agnes and Other Poems by John Keats, Don Juan by Lord Byron, 
Ode to the West Wind by Percy B. Shelley. Nice, right? The next is the Victorian period literature. This period saw the rise of the novel. The greatest English novelist, Charles Dickens, wrote the great expectation in the 19th century. Other writers in this period are Alfred Tennyson, one of the greatest poets whose work in memoriam was dedicated to his best friend. Another writer was Robert Browning, known for his dramatic monologues in his poems, specifically My Last Duchess, and Oscar Wilde, the best dramatist whose best work is The Importance of Being Earnest. And the last period, the 20th century period or literature from 1900 to 2000. This is known as the modernist era. Here, the writers known to be under this era are William Butler Yeats, who wrote The Tower, The Winding Stair, and New Poems, Thomas Stearns Eliot, The Love Song of G. Alfred Prufrock, the Wasteland. Virginia Woolf was famous for her Mrs. Dalloway and James Joyce for his Ulysses. James Joyce uses stream of consciousness. It is a literary technique in which the flow of thoughts of a character is described in words. This stream of consciousness this literary technique is commonly used in our drama, in our teleseries, in our movies these days. This is very common nowadays. Now let's continue. Let's proceed to the American literature. We're done with the English literature. Let's proceed to American literature. Who are some of the important American writers during the 19th and 20th centuries? Because there are only two eras mentioned here, 19th and 20th centuries. Why are they important? What literary forms are prominent in American literature? American literature are, refers to all works of literature in English produced in the United States. Let's begin with the 19th century. Who are the writers? What year do they thrive? And what are their famous works? Let's begin with William Colin Bryant from 1794 to 1878. He was an American romantic poet, journalist, and a longtime editor of the New York Evening Post. He became famous for his Thanatopsis, the poem which marked a new beginning for American poetry. He was born on November 3, 1794 in Cummington, Massachusetts, United States, and died in June 12, 1878 in New York, New York, United States. The next famous author in the American literature is Washington Irving. the author of the first American work to become successful internationally. He was an American short story writer, essayist, biographer, historian, and diplomat of the early 19th century. He is best known for his short stories, Rip, Rap, Wick, Rip Van Winkle, The Legend of the Sleepy Hollow, which both of them appear in his collection, The Sketchbook. He was born in April 3, 1783 in Manhattan, New York, and died in November 28, 1859 in Washington Irving, Sunnyside, Tarrytown, New York, United States. Next is Edgar Allan Poe, 1809 to 1849. Poe became famous of his macabre stories. He was an American writer, poet, editor, and literary critic. Poe is best known for his poetry and short stories. 
particularly his tales of mystery and the macabre. He was born in January 19, 1809 in Boston, Massachusetts and died in October 7, 1849 in Baltimore, Maryland, United States. The next author that we'll discuss is Nathaniel Hawthorne, who became known for his symbolical tales. He was an American novelist, dark romantic, and short story writer. His works often focus on history, morality, and religion. He was born July 4, 1804 in Salem, Massachusetts, United States, and died on May 19, 1864 in Plymouth, New Hampshire, United States. The next is Walt Whitman. 1819-1892. He showed the experiences of the common man in his works. He was an American poet, essayist, and journalist. A humanist, he was a part of the transition between transcendentalism and realism, incorporating both views in his works. Whitman is some of the most influential poets in the American canon, is often called the father of free verse. And the last one in the 19th century is Emily Elizabeth Dickinson, he, who used the imperfect rhymes and avoided regular rhythms. She was an American poet. Little known during her life, she has since been regarded as one of the most important figures in American poetry. She was born in Amherst, Massachusetts, United States, in December 10, 1830, and died in the same place, May 15, 1886. Moving on to the 20th century. The first author or writer in this century was Robert Lee Frost, an American poet. His work was initially published in England before it was published in the United States. He wrote poems which portray ordinary people in everyday situation using traditional stanzas and a blank verse in a yambic pentameter with no rhyme. He died in 1963. Next is Edward Estlin Cummings, known for his unconventional punctuation and phrasing. E. E. Cummings was an American poet, painter, atheist, author, and playwright. He wrote approximately 2,900 poems, two autobiographical novels, four plays, and several essays. Next, we have Ezra Weston Loomis Pound. He was a leader of the Imagists, who emphasized the use of direct and sparse language and precise images in writing poetry. He was an expatriate American poet and critic. He is a major figure in the early modernist poetry movement and a fascist collaborator in Italy during World War II. He was born in October 3, 1885 in Idaho, United States and died in November 1, 1972 in Venice, Italy. Sherwood Anderson, sorry, Sherwood Anderson wrote prose in everyday speech. He was an American novelist and short story writer known for subjective and self-revealing works. Self-educated, he rose to become a successful copywriter and business owner in Cleveland and Elyria, Ohio. Next, we have Ernest Miller Hemingway known for his succinct writing, very straightforward and objective. He was an American novelist, short story writer, journalist, and sportsman. His economical and understated style, which he termed the iceberg theory, had a strong influence in 20th century fiction, while his adventurous lifestyle and his public image brought him admiration from later generations. Another writer from America is Erwin Allen Ginsberg. 
He was known for his work with incantatory rhythms and raw emotions. As a student at Columbia University in the 1940s, he began friendships with William E. Burroughs and Jack Kerouac, forming the core of the Beat Generation, which aimed to bring poetry back to the streets. And last but not least, in the American literature, we have Anne Sexton, an American poet known for her highly personal confessional verse. She won the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry in 1967 for her book, Live or Die. Now let's move on to the European or Western literature. From this literature, we have marked six languages used by the writers. First is the Latin literature. We have Marcus Tullius Cicero, the greatest Roman orator. He was a Roman statesman, lawyer, scholar, an academic skeptic, who played an important role in the politics of the late Roman Republic. He upheld optimate principles during the crisis that led to the establishment of the Roman Empire. He was born in January 3, 106 BC in Arpino, Italy. He was beheaded by the Order of the Second Triumvirate in December 7, 43 BC at Formia, Italy. Next, in the Latin literature is Publius Virgilius Maro, or usually called Virgil or Virgil in English, an ancient Roman poet of the Augustan period. He wrote three of the most famous poems in Latin literature, the Eclogues, the Georgics, and the Epic Enid. Virgil was the greatest Roman poet. Next is the Greek literature. The first Greek literary figure is Homer, who was presumed the author of the Iliad and the Odyssey, the two epic poems that are foundational works of ancient Greek literature. The Iliad is said to be set during the Trojan War. It's a ten-year siege of the city of Troy by a coalition of Greek kingdoms. Next is Sophocles, one of the three ancient Greek tragedians whose plays have survived. His first plays were written later than or contemporary with those of Esclicus, and earlier than or contemporary with those of Euripides. Sophocles was a tragic playwright. He was born in Colonus, Athens and died in classical Athens. Next is the Italian literature. Francisco Petrarca, or Petrarch, perfected the Italian sonnet, a major influence in European poetry which was written in the vernacular. He was an Aritin, scholar and poet during the early Italian Renaissance and one of the earliest humanists. Next is Giovanni Boccaccio. He was an Italian writer, poet, correspondent of Petrarch, and an important Renaissance humanist. He was known par excellence as the Sir Taldis, and one of the most important figures in the European literary panorama of the 14th century. The next is the Spanish literature. Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra was a Spanish writer widely regarded as the greatest writer in the Spanish language and one of the world's preeminent novelists. He is best known for his novel Den Don Quixote, a work of incited as both the first modern novel and one of the pinnacles of the world literature. That is Miguel de Cervantes. Next, is Lope Felix de Vega Carpio, Spanish playwright, poet, novelist, and marine. He was one of the key figures in the Spanish golden age of Baroque literature. Was born 
in November 25, 1562 and died in August 27, 1635. Next up is the French literature. We have Gustave Flaubert, a French novelist. Highly influential, he has been considered the leading exponent of literary realism in this country. Followed by Henry René Albert G. de Massapont. He was a 19th century French author remembered as a master of the short story form. And as a representative of naturalist school, he depicted human lives and destinies and social forces in disillusioned and often pessimistic terms. He is the author of the famous The Little Prince. Next, you have the Russian literature. Count Lev Nikolaevich Tolstoy, usually referred to in English as Leo Tolstoy, was a Russian writer who is regarded as one of the greatest authors of all time. He received nominations for the Nobel Prize in Literature every year from 1902 to 1906 and for the Nobel Peace Prize in the 1901, 1902, and 1909. Next is Anton Pavlovich Chekhov a Russian playwright and short story writer who is considered to be among the greatest writers of short fiction. His career as a playwright produced four classics and his best short stories are held in high esteem by writers and critics. As you can see, Marcos Tolio Cicero as an orator provided us with Pro Cluentio, the best of his speech. Next, Verhill gave us Aeneid, as what has been said a while ago. From Greece, we have Homer, the Iliad, and the Odyssey, and Sophocles from Greece also, Oedipus the King. Petrarca from Italy, from it an Italian author gave us the canzoniere, while Boccaccio, also an Italian author, gave us the Decameron. Of course, Don Quixote is from Miguel de Cervantes of Spain, and Lope de Vega gave us 1,800 plays. Madame Bovary was uh, written by Gustave Flaubert. And The Little Prince from G. D. Mapasan, a naturalist who presents a real slice of life. Leo Tolstoy's best, one of the best works of Leo Tolstoy is Anna Karenina and Anton Chekhov, The Bet and the Misfortunes. Famous in the Latin American literature, is the vanguardia or avant-garde in English, which is collectively referred to the different literary movements in Latin America. First of these movements is the so-called creationismo, founded by Vicente Hodubro in 1916. Creationismo or creationism is based on the idea of a poem as a truly new thing, created by the author for the sake of itself, that is, not to praise another thing, not to please the reader, not even to be understood by its own author. Second movement is Ultraismo, which was introduced by Jorge Luis Borges in 1921. The Ultraist movement, or Ultraismo, was again a literary movement born in Spain, with a declared intention of opposing modernismo, which had dominated Spanish poetry since the end of the 19th century. Next is Estridentismo, which was founded by Manuel Map Maples Arce in 1921. Stridentism or Estridentismo 
was an artistic and multidisciplinary avant-garde movement founded in Puebla City by again Manuel Maples Arce at the end of 1921 but formally developed in Salapa where all the founders moved after the University of Veracruz granted its support for the movement. And the last one is Surrealism, which was started by Aldo Pellegrini through the launch of the first Surrealist magazine in 1928. Who are the prominent people under Surrealism? You have Ricardo Elicer Neptali Reyes Basualto, better known by his pen name and later legal name Pablo Neruda, a Chilean poet, diplomat, and politician who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1971. Next is Octavio Paz Luzano, a Mexican poet and diplomat. For his body of work, he was awarded the 1981 Miguel de Cervantes Prize. Another author is George Francisco Isidoro Luis Borges Acevedo, an Argentine short story writer, easiest poet and translator, and a key figure in Spanish language and universal literature. Another one is Alijo Carpentier y Valmont, a Cuban novelist, atheist, and musicologist who greatly influenced Latin American literature during its famous boom period. And the last one is Miguel Angel Astorias Rosales, a Nobel Prize winning Guatemalan, a poet, diplomat, novelist, playwright, and journalist. In the Latin America literature, there are two novels or works that were famous, one of which is the Boom Novels. These are essentially modernist novels which appeared in the second half of the 20th century. They had features that were different or absent from the works of the regionalist writers. The main characteristics of regionalism are its strong local identity and the claims for more political and economic autonomy. The next is the post-boom writers, which include a host of women who published works in the last 20 years of the 20th century. These women rejected the boom's experimental approach, and instead, they embraced a simpler, more approachable narrative. These women were heeded by Isabel Allende, a Chilean, whose work, The House of Spirits, published in 1982. Next, another Chilean, Diamila Iltit, with her work, E. Luminata, in 1983. And Luisa Valenzuela, an Argentinian, with her famous work, Black Novel, with Argentines, 1990. proceed to the Asian literature. We will be speaking about the origin of this literature. First, we will have the Chinese literature. Of course, these are body works in Chinese with more than 50,000 published works in a wide range of topics. Famous of this literature are Du Fu, a Chinese poet and politician of the Tang Dynasty. Along with his elder contemporary and friend Li Bai, he is frequently called the greatest of the Chinese poets. His greatest ambition was to serve his country and as a successful civil servant, but he proved unable to make the necessary accommodations. He is known for his works of Lushi. Next is Li Bai, who is also known as Li Bu, whose courtesy name is Tai Bai, and whose art name is King Lian Jushi. He was a Chinese poet acclaimed from his own day to the present as a genius and a romantic figure 
who took traditional poetic forms to new heights. He is frequently celebrated drinking in his poetry. Next, we have the Japanese literature. The body of works here are mostly in Japanese language. The first author that we will talk about is Kakinomoto no Hitomaro. He was a Japanese waka poet and aristocrat of the late Asuka period. He was the most prominent of the poets included in the Manyushu, Man the oldest waka anthology. But apart from what can be gleaned from hints in the Manyushu, the details of his life are largely uncertain. His is famous with his tanka and chuka. Next is Machu Bashu. Machu Bashu born Machu Kinsako, then Machu Chumon Monifusa, was the most famous poet of the Edo period in Japan. During his lifetime, Bashu was recognized for his works in the collaborative Haikai Noringa. Today, after centuries of commentary, he is recognized as the greatest master of haiku. Followed by Injan literature. The body of works is produced in India in Sanskrit, Hindi, Punjabi, Tamil, or Udo. The best works or the, the famous works of the Indian literature are the following. Mahabharata, one of the two major Sanskrit epics of ancient India, the longest epic with about 100,000 100, couplets. It narrates the struggle between two groups of cousins in Kurukshetra War and the fates of Kaurava and the Pandava princes and their successors. It was believed to be written by Krishna, Devapayana, Vyasa or Vidavyasa, an Indian sage in 1500 BCE. Next work is the Ramayana, an epic with 24,000 couplets, a religious text, which was believed to be written by Balmiki, Balmiki, a harbinger poet in, poet in the 5th century to 1st century BCE. The last one is a Panchatantra, an ancient Indian collection of interrelated animal fables in Sanskrit verse and prose arranged within a frame story. The surviving work is dated to roughly 200 BCE to 300 CE based on older oral tradition. This was believed to be written by Vishnu Sharma, a learned Brahmin in the 3rd century. The last to discuss is the African literature. This, this literature have writers using English, French, and other European language from Africa, or they are all African writers. The common themes of the African literature are oppression of African people by the colonizers, European influences on the native African culture, racial discrimination, pride in Africans past, and resilience. Famous writer of the African literature are Chinua Chive, a Nigerian, whose famous works are Things Fall Apart, The African Trilogy, No Longer at Ease, and Ara of God. We have also Wally Soyinka, also a Nigerian, who has a Dance of the Forest famous work. Another is Nadine Gordimer, South African Nobel Prize awardee with her work A World of Strangers 
the late Borga, Bor, Borga's world, Borga's daughter, and July's people. The last one is Chimamanda Ngugusi Adichie, a Nigerian whose famous, famous works are Purple Hibiscus, Half of a Yellow Sun, and Americana. After the lengthy discussion of the different writers and their literary works from the different continents in the world, let us see if you have learned something. Answer with, the, with confirm or disconfirm each of the statements. First, Emily Dickinson mostly used perfect rhyme and apply regular rhythms. Confirm or disconfirm? Next, Creacionismo was founded by Vicente Hodubro, a Chilean poet. Do you confirm or disconfirm? Next, Oscar Wilde is the best dramat dramatist of the Victorian period and he wrote the masterpiece, The Importance of Being Earnest. Next. Gay de Maupassant, a novelist, was a major influence on the realist school. Confirm or disconfirm? Madame Bovary, marked the commencement of new age of realism. Next, the haiku is a basic form of Japanese poetry and has five lines in 57577 five, seven, syllable pattern. Next, Americana tells the story of a young Nigerian woman that came to the U.S. to study and to stay for work. Next, Miguel de Cervantes was known for his novel, Don Quixote. And the last one, Ernest Hemingway championed the killers, while Ezra Pound became famous of his masterpiece, Live or Die. Confirm or disconfirm? Let's check later your answer. Next, let's proceed to We Match Together. This is task number four. Match column A, which, are the list, which is the list of writers, to column B, which is the list of representative texts. Write the letter of your answer on your notebooks. Are you ready? Okay. Column A. Writers, Robert Frost, Matsu Basu, Wally Soyinka, Gustav Flaubert, Edgar Allan Poe, Pablo Neruda, Homer, Charles Dickens, Anton Chekhov, and Leo Tolstoy. Okay, what do you think is the representative text of Robert Frost? All right. Do it on your notebooks. Okay. Moving on, we are going to read a masterpiece by an author known to be Boy Wonder. Let us know him first. He is Latif Mohidin. He was born in Serembam, Nigeri, Simbilan, Malaysia. He was known as a boy wonder because of the artistry of his works. He attended schools in Berlin, Germany, Paris, France, and New York, USA. He is a poet and a painter, and he is considered to be one of the Mal of Malaysia's most treasured 
living artists. So what you're going to do now, you are going to read his poem in the midst of hardship. All right? Next. After reading Latif Muhyiddin's masterpiece in the midst of hardship, read the questions that follow and choose the letter of your answer. Your answers will be written on your notebooks to be checked later. Alright? Very good. Another way of understanding or analyzing a literary text aside from question and answer as we have done, a reader may use another lens of literary criticism. This lens of criticism deals with the study, evaluation, and interpretation of a literary piece. That is what you are about to do. There are two commonly used approaches in literary criticism. Take note of the term literary criticism. These are formalism and reader response criticism. I am now going to give you the bird's eye view of these two approaches through a Venn diagram. Look here. When we say Venn diagram, we are, we are talking about the similarities and the differences of two things. In this idea, in, in this case, we are talking about to the differences and similarities of two ideas or concepts. First, you have formalism. It is also known Russian formalism. It is based on the idea of semiotics by Ferdinand de Saussure. Formalism aims to look at the medium in which literature is written, meaning to say the focus of formalism is on the form and technique used in literature rather than its content. While on the other hand, reader response criticism, it is just reader response talking about reader's response theory, which recognizes the reader as an active agent who imparts real existence to work and completes its meaning through interpretation. I'll repeat. A reader response criticism is based on the reader response theory, which recognizes the reader as an active agent who imparts real existence to work and completes its meaning through interpretation. It argues that literature should be viewed as a performing art. Rather than, it should focus on the reader and the reader's experiences of a literary work. What is common to them? Both deal with the study, evaluation, and interpretation of literature. Formalism and reader response criticism study, evaluate, and interpret, it, interpret a literary text. In short, formalism focuses on the form and technique of the literary piece while reader response focuses on the reader or audience or the role of the reader being essential to the meaning of the text. The role of the reader is essential to the meaning of the text. Okay? Now, under, after understanding the two literary criticism approaches, write a short literary analysis on the point in the midst of hardship by Latif Muhyiddin. You may use any of the two literary criticism approaches as you anal analyze the literary text. You will be rated based on the criteria here. Content of your analysis is 10 points, organization is 5 points, and grammar 5 points. This has to be submitted. Okay, are you ready to unfold the chronicle written by Malala Yousafzai? 
What would be the memoir all about? Do you have an idea about the battle cry of the author? And who is Malala? That is what we are going to talk about next. Malala Yousafzai or Yusuf says, or Yusuf say, whatever, however you pronounce her name, was born in July 12, 1997, in Mingura, Pakistan. Her nationality, of course, she is a Pakistani, but then later on, she became a Canadian citizen. Her education for high school is in Pakistan, Ed Edge Baston High School, and in college in University of Oxford. Her occupation is an activist for female education and a former blogger for BBC Ordo. An employer in the Malala Fund and a Nobel Prize awardee in 2014. Who is she? Why are we going to study about her? Malala, as a young girl, became an advocate for girls' education. She, she advocated that girls should also be in school. She was, because of this, she was issued a death threat by the Taliban. Because she pers pursued her advocacy, she was shot in the head by a Taliban soldier on October 9, 2012. Luckily, she survived, but still she continued with her advocacy. In 2013, she was nominated for the Nobel Prize, but did not won or did not win. But then, in 2014, she won and received the Nobel Prize Award for being brave and courageous for her advocacy. Now, what you're going to do is read the prologue of Malala Yousafzai, Yousafzai entitled, I am Malala, the girl who stood up for education and was shot by the Taliban. It is on page 19. You read it. Okay? Look at the cartoon here. That is Malala Yousafzai. Okay? Look at that. What terrifies religious extremists like the Taliban are not American tanks or bombs or bullets. What terrify them is a girl with a book. Okay? Why? What does a girl with a book symbolize? What threats does it present to terrorists like the Taliban? Okay? So, you read now the excerpt from the Malala Yousafzai's memoir, I Am Malala. That is on page 20 to page 23 of module 1 of your modules. Now, who is Malala? And she said, I am Malala, and this is my story. Okay. So what is your answer for number one? What first impression of Malala do you get from the opening paragraph of the, pro of the prologue? What kind of girl is she? Number two, based on how she describes her hometown in Pakistan and her current home in England, what are the main differences that she observes between the two? Okay. And number three, why is it difficult for girls in their society to be educated or to pursue any vocation they want? The last question, 
Would you have had the bravery that Malala exhibited and continues to exhibit? Now let's proceed to your task number seven, the 5-5 five, five method. Five fingers in five words. First finger, the thumb, is the title impression. Four finger, admired characters. Middle finger, captivating plot. The ring finger, central theme. And the little finger, author's message. Let us see how you fare with this. Okay. Now, task number eight. Fill and fill in your answers in the box provided below. All right. What are the literary elements present in the Chronicle of Malala. What is the genre or form of her story? And what is the theme of the write-up? As a sort of review, let us go back to what are the different literary elements. When we say elements, we have the character, the setting, the plot, the theme, frame, exposition, the ending or denouma, the motif, the titling, and the narrative point of view. And when we say literary genre or form, we are referring to fiction, non-fiction, drama, poetry, and folktale. And when we say themes in the story, it could be love, it could be death, good versus evil, coming of age, power and corruption, survival, courage and heroism, prejudice, individual versus society, and war. You get that? Very good. If you have any questions later on, you may chat or you may PM me with your questions. But please submit all the things that needs to be submitted, especially the exercises or the tasks that were given to you. To end this session, let me leave this quote to all of you. Great literature is simply language charged with meaning to the utmost possible degree. This was from Ezra Pound. If I would give you the meaning of this quote, I would say that literature is simply a language, but you need to understand what is the hidden meaning and the intended meaning of the author that he or she wants to give across to us. Okay? See you next week for our continued activities and goodbye class.